Welcome to North Georgia Now today. Today is beautiful Tuesday. It is, um, <clears throat> have you rested any? I did. You did? Yep. Okay, because y'all pumped it out. Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. Did you sing Sunday? Yes, we did. Sing wow, Sunday. four Alabama. days. Yep. It did was you? A long four days. Yes, it was. Good four days. A, but a long good four days. four days. That's right. It was great. We had a good time. I only got to come Saturday night, yeah. but. The spirit in the house was extremely, it was almost, you could feel it. Yeah. You could feel it. it the Saturday was probably the best of the three nights, although they were all good. It was mm -hmm. good to see everybody in each group did a good job. Um, I think we felt a little bit of the economy on oh, Thursday yeah. and Friday, plus the graduations on Friday. Right. Um, but still, good crowds, I mean, decent crowds throughout the week, but then very good on Saturday. And they had a matinee in the afternoon, which they'll do again next year. And mm -hmm. I think next year we're going to do just Friday and Saturday and kind of move it away from the graduation weekend. Yes, but, uh, that, that it was definitely really has to happen because you could tell a difference. Yeah. yeah, Dove Brothers did great Saturday. Uh, Carolina Crossman were there, of course, mm -hmm. and had them. Mm -hmm. and, and they just did a good job. I Actually, mean, this week on Heart of the Home in Atlanta, we are showing the Carol Blanton shows because I talked about the fact that Carol is, I mean, he is so versatile. He can do anything. He can work on the bus too, you know, That's although right. they have a mechanic who works on their bus. Carol is is a kind of an all around guy. He's well, just that, a good he's, guy. He's willing to help with mm -hmm. anybody. He, he, he tries to help everybody. Sometimes you run across some people that just, you know, they don't want to help somebody else, but mm -hmm. he's one that definitely wants to help other people. And, and he's done, a, a, he's made a change in the last year from singing tenor. He's now singing lead and mm -hmm. they hired a tenor. And, right. And uh, that's been an interesting train change for them, but they've done very well. Now, did you know that the bus driver for the Dove Brothers watches you and I on Heart of the Home in North Carolina? Well, I, yeah. <laughs> uh, matter of fact, I got a text from him one day, and he says, I want some of that strawberry cobbler. <laughs> so, he did. yeah, then the first thing I when I saw him Saturday, he said, did you bring any of that strawberry he cobbler? Told I said, me no, that. but it won't take long to fix. <laughs> no, it's sure. very simple. Yeah. Well, we have decided next week begins our meet and greet time. Yep. We will be out in the public starting next Tuesday. We will be at Town and Country here in, uh, here in, not here, this is Gilmer County, in Fannin County. We will start there purely because we are, we are lifting our friend Hans Rupert once again. Right. He is in Atlanta today doing a short segment on um, another program talking about his recovery, the challenges, what's happening, the fact that when you have the cancer he's had, you never know what the next test results will be. So we have decided in order to, we had already planned this meet and greet. He and I came together and said, hey, look, we won some tellies with the Heart of the Home with he and I together. Mm -hmm. And we said, let's do it again. So we will be next Tuesday. Guess who else is going to be there? The Diplomats. Yep. We will have entertainment here on the show by the Diplomats. We will leave here, go straight to Fannin County. We will begin there, we think, around 1130. We will shoot two Heart of the Homes. We will have the Barker Brothers entertaining. We will have the Diplomats entertaining. You will get to meet and greet Miss Rita and Jimmy and Joe mm -hmm. Brown, who happens to be, in my opinion, the finest bass singer in gospel music today. He does a fantastic job. He is he's amazing. A, uh, yeah, he's, he's probably the most un unrecognized. And, Absolutely. Uh, but he's, he's definitely deserves and to be recognized. And the best smelling bass player in gospel music today. <laughs> His wife told me, she said, we always say, now honey, did you put on enough cologne? <laughs> uh, yeah, he puts it on, that's for <laughs> yes, sure. Yes, he does. He is a good, good guy. Yeah. Now, now, let me tell you something. I enjoyed Saturday night. When Les came up and did a few songs with y'all, That's y a lot of fun. I remembered those Sunday mornings turning that TV on and those few songs that hit you dead on, and people don't forget them. Yeah, I talk to them a little bit sometimes. I, I still feel like somebody needs to revive the uh, Jubilee? Sunday morning Jubilee. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the, well, Bill Gaither actually owns yeah. the rights to it now. Mm -hmm. So um, it you would be so cool. You know who owns the old cool. tapes of that? Who? By the way, Willie Nelson. Really? He sure does. Wow. He owns the, all the old tapes and all the old originals. Yeah. Well, it, Saturday night was amazing because those few songs he chose were the ones that if you oh, were yeah. in the kitchen making biscuits and you heard that music, you knew run to the TV. It was that time. Yeah. It was yeah. that time. How old is he? I think he's 80, but he does. He still ha does a good job and he's having fun. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like Archie. Archie's having fun and you know, doing what he's doing and. Les comes out and sings a few songs, but if you watch him the whole night, he just enjoys what he's doing. And mm -hmm. I enjoy singing with him because he just, he, he doesn't care. He, 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 
he wants to come across professional and stuff, but he, it's back to where it ought to be, having fun and, oh, and yeah. just enjoying yeah. what you're doing. Well, a lady's going to be here today to talk to you about that very thing because she hadn't seen you sing publicly with this new group, and she got to see you Saturday night. And all the way home, she said, he's a different man. He is a different man. She said, there's a glow in his eyes. He is a different man. There's a spirit there. Now, Miss Rita, being one of my best, best friends, I left the singing barefooted, didn't I? Yes. Because Miss Rita's feet were swole to the max. Oh, yeah. And I looked down at her feet, and I said, oh, my Lord, your feet make mine hurt. So I made her take off her shoes, and I gave her my shoes. Mine are very good support, very, they work. They're just really, really good shoes. So I took them off, and she said, you can't run around here barefoot. And I said, yes, I can. Yeah. So I was at the concert barefoot, and I kind of kept my feet under the chair so nobody knew. And then we left there barefooted. Well, I will tell you, I haven't been home. So I went and bought myself a pair of cheap sandals. <laughs> but I just, I looked at her feet and I thought, she's got to stand on stage and sing for 45 minutes. Not with those swole feet, she's mm -hmm. not. She came across Saturday night the strongest I've ever heard her voice. Yeah. yeah she she, she was she amazing. Yeah. yeah. Now talk about the blessing song. Why does she love that so much? Well, because it's so personal to her. I mean, there's been, well, especially the t one of the main things that it takes her to, she, she had a, a niece that was killed in a car accident. Right. She said Saturday she night was the that, night. That's right. Yeah. It was a, it was an anniversary date of that death. And, um, you know, no matter how bad a situation gets, and I think everybody needs to hear this, uh, no matter how bad a situation gets, there's a blessing somewhere mm -hmm. in that trial. And that's why that song really helps um, uh, so many people and she sings it with that conviction that she really believes that because mm -hmm. she's been there oh, yeah. <clears throat> you know it's one thing for you know you have people writing books on how to raise children that mm -hmm. have never had children mm -hmm. you know it doesn't Duh. really mean a whole let lot let me give you, know? you two or three and let you yeah, write a book yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right but you know when you have somebody that's been there then that's the ones that you can really relate to and they say yeah they know what I, my brother mark told me about that he said you know a lot of people, when somebody goes through a death situation, it's one thing for them to say, I'm, you know, I know what you're going through. But when somebody has actually been there, my mm -hmm. aunt came through. Uh, she had a, a little boy that died young with leukemia. Mm -hmm. and when she came through and said, Mark, I know what you're going through, that's a he total knew. different yeah. story. And that's where uh, I believe that's why Rita really, really enjoys that song and, and wants to use it as a ministry song to help so many people. Mm -hmm. I believe that's why it's 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 the reason. It just she can she can portray that message and minister to people through right. that. Right. Well, on eleven eleven twenty six oh eight, y'all, you were here working with me. They came in. You stepped up and sang with them. Mm -hmm. The day you sang, Jesus is coming soon. Now I'm gonna tell you, there's a really world famous group who has a new CD out with Jesus is coming soon on it. <laughs> y'all have got them whooped twenty to nothing. They have it out on a CD, but it doesn't have the, you know, and I'm thinking, jazz it up a little bit. Come on, guys, come on. Well, they are raising money with their CD for an organization, a national organization. And I listened to this CD Sunday, and I almost ordered it. And I said, why would I when I could hear the diplomats do Jesus is Coming Soon dead on perfect? Is that your signature song now? Uh, no, I don't think it is. I think it is a one of the signature songs. Um, you know that that's a song that the inspirations came out of the mountains years ago with. Mm -hmm. um, and now and tons of people have recorded it. it well, and it, actually, the original recorder that was the Oak Ridge Boys, mm -hmm. and they sang it. Well, and they're doing they it again. It. Yeah. They're doing it again. And, but uh, let me tell you something: they don't do it as good as y'all do. They're no. a little draggy. There's a there's a pep in it with yeah. the way we do it, and yeah. I like it. I, I, I guess the signature song would be "I Have Not Forgotten" mm -hmm. or "Resurrection Ground." Resurrection you know, both Ground. Both those, yeah, they're they're right there together. Now you know how long it's been since I've heard you sing "Resurrection Ground." Well, I hope it wasn't that last live version. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually. <laughs> we did that live show, and that was. Um, mm, that, no, it we don't even want to go there. That's for sure. That was bad. Maybe Real on bad. your fifth anniversary here, we'll play that. And we'll go, yeah. oh, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? <laughs> oh, I don't know what I was thinking, but I was thinking <laughs> Melton was trying to sing tenor, which was classic in itself. And then Darren was trying to find something in there, too. And it was just, 
that just one of those days. I mean, mm -hmm. it was uh, it was a Tuesday, but it sure felt like a Monday. That's for sure. <laughs> it did. It but, did. Uh, we made it through. But uh, yeah, you know, there's certain songs I think get characterized with certain people, and Resurrection Ground, of course, has been one that's really been well. Again, same thing as uh, Rita. It, it was dear to me because it's what I went through. It's what mm -hmm. our family went through. My mm -hmm. brother went through, and so. I can I can sing that song I believe and mm -hmm. try to get that message out there because I don't just sing words off a of paper, I I sing the message mm -hmm. I believe because I felt it. Well, the night <clears throat> I was sitting in the Tate gym and you stepped on stage and you sang that song. I I bought 40 seats that night and I had 40 people there with me. We had the first four rows, and we were one of them had just lost her grandson in a horrific car accident. <clears throat> one of them had just lost her husband. I had just lost my husband. And we sat there holding hands, death grip clenching hands as you stepped on stage and sang that song. It totally turned my life around. It totally turned my life around. Yeah. I've told Mark this. When he wrote that, he did it to comfort himself. Sure. Did he know how many people it would comfort? I had no idea. I, you know, um, he told me he smiled twice during Marie's funeral. Uh, one was the Monday before she went into surgery, which would have been a week and one day before the funeral. Um, she, we gathered together 26 or 28 preachers and prayed for her, prayed the Lord would touch her and, um, and heal her, which, mm -hmm. you know, ultimately the Lord did heal her right. completely. She never has to go through any of that again. But right. um, that night, Marie sang two songs, Jesus Loves Me and Then I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. Well, somebody recorded that that night. Mm -hmm. And so during the funeral, they wanted that played. So Marie actually sang at her own funeral and Mark smiled during that time. And then mm -hmm. the other time that they smiled was uh, when my uncle made the statement at the end. He said, you know, to the Christian, a casket is no longer a casket. It's a hope chest. And to the Christian, the grave is not the end. It's resurrection ground. Mm -hmm. Well, that was the only two times he smiled during that funeral. And it, what amazes me about that song, and I say this a lot, and I think sometimes people may think that it's just maybe dramatizing it, but it mm -hmm. wasn't. It was, we walked, we literally, you could see Mark's house from the cemetery. Mm -hmm. And so instead of riding in our cars back, we walked back to the house. And uh, we're talking about within two hours, you know, Mark was missing. And I thought, well, he must be grieving somewhere or just going through a hard time. But he come back and he had a little just scrap piece of paper. He said, I wonder what y'all think about this song. Mm -hmm. And he had written the entire song, Resurrection Ground, in two hours. Now, I am i don't think I'm a total worldly person, but... When, if I had just buried my daughter, I don't think I'd have been thinking that spiritual uh -huh. of things, although mm -hmm. I'm thankful that he was. Mm -hmm. And so he, his, he took the thought, resurrection ground, and just as you hear it today, other than the extra verse, mm -hmm. that's never been recorded. I'm mm -hmm. fixing to record it with the uh, diplomats right. this week, as a matter right. of fact. Um, but uh, I'm amazed at how well written that song is. Mm -hmm. It's, of course, given from the Lord, you know, or it wouldn't be that well written, but uh, it's helped. There's no telling how many people. I, 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 I mean, thousands, hundreds mm -hmm. of thousands. Oh, yeah, you know. absolutely. Uh, my brother was preaching, uh, helping preach a funeral in Illinois, and he pastors up there. His name is Roger. And the other pastor that was helping in the funeral said, I want to read some words from a song that somebody had given to me. We're talking about Illinois from, mm -hmm. from <laughs> and Georgia he read, to Illinois. He read the song Resurrection Ground uh -huh. and had no clue where it was and didn't know that Roger's Roger was brother there. His, his, <laughs> my brother wrote that song. And yeah. I, I'll never forget, we were singing somewhere and it seems like it was up north, but I can't remember where it was. I was with the Inspirations at the time and it was really interesting. I had a fella come up to me and he, uh, I had sung the song Resurrection Ground, but that particular night I didn't, Give the testimony of it, mm -hmm. and he came and usually up. Usually, you do. Because I usually you, you it, it adds there's so somebody much to the there song. You haven't related it. That's to. exactly right. Yeah. And I mean, the times I've said it over and over again. So sometimes I think, well, no, I won't do it tonight. But it's inevitable. Any time that I don't give the story, people mm -hmm. come up and say, "I wish you'd have said that." Mm -hmm. So I try to bring a little bit of it out. Well, this fella, this this particular night, I had not brought that out, and this fella came up and he was all excited. He said have you ever heard where that song came from? And, I, and before I could say yes, he said, let me tell you. He said, this, this preacher had a son. And I said, no, no. He said, no, let me tell you. And I, he's all excited. <laughs> he went on 10 minutes. And I, I said, well, that's not exactly how the story went. He said, oh, yeah. And I said, he said, how do you know? And I said, because my brother wrote the song. I know how the song went. <laughs> that's it. And he couldn't believe that. But, yeah, it's just, you know, we just don't know 
how far that ministry reaches, mm -hmm. you know, and how many, well, everybody relates to that, mm -hmm. you know. It, it, you know how cold the grave seems, you oh. know. But now people look at it as resurrection ground, and that's a blessing. Well, tomorrow will be a day that normally I would spend at the cemetery. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> tomorrow would be JS's 60, Lord Sherry, get it right, 66th birthday. That sounds so crazy that he would be 66 years old. But um, I don't do the cemetery thing anymore. I understand that it is resurrection ground. I understand what happened there. I understand what will happen one day. But I used to spend three times a day at the cemetery. Sure. I don't do that anymore. And the last time you and I went to the cemetery, you asked me, you said, is it hard? And I said, no, it isn't anymore. But it took listening to music. It took relaying stories to other people, you know, and them telling me things that they, you know, and I used to find comfort in going to the cemetery. I don't anymore. I still take flowers. I still do my, I don't guess it's my duty, but I do what I think should be done. Now, J.S. would say, don't waste the money on the flowers and don't come out here because I'm not here, you right, know. Right. But I had this hang up about it and I was going there three times a day. Now, tomorrow would have been his birthday and I probably won't even go to the cemetery. Although last year I did and I felt, um, I've already changed the flowers. I changed flowers a couple of weeks ago. I, I have finally come through that time. And the music that Mark wrote brought me through sure. a very troubled time, a very troubled time. And, and I, I wrote Mark a note and I told him this. And I said, you know, you didn't know me when I was down as low as you can get. And, and nobody realizes just how low I was. And truthfully, that nine-year-old child at my house saved my life. Sure. He saved my sure. life. Because he well, got me through till you showed up at my house and played football in the yard with Nick. And, and then things started that night. Things started to change. And I truly believe that God has a plan for each and every one of us. God brought you into my life, <clears throat> and, and it is just, it has been an amazing journey. It it's has been an amazing been, journey. He does that just in his right time. Mm -hmm. um, I think you hit a note. Is that there a, a lot song of people, in his time? Yeah, in mm -hmm. his time. Booth Brothers sang yes. that one. Yes, yes. Um, but uh, I think you hit a note that a lot of people need to realize, and that is everybody faces grief differently. Mm -hmm. And uh, there have been some times where people have buried a loved one, and the one that was uh, the spouse never went to the grave mm -hmm. and then some people think well how could you be so disrespectful mm -hmm. you know i think we need to realize everybody has to handle grief in their own way right and and there's nothing there's no right, right or wrong about it uh, a young preacher had gone out and, and had done a funeral um in a cemetery and was at the graveside and several times that he had been out there doing funerals he noticed an elderly lady standing at a grave just weeping and he was young and just trying to think of something nice to say to this lady because he'd seen her every time he'd been mm -hmm. out there. And he went up there and he tried to come up with some words and said, you know, uh, he's really not there. If he was saved, he's in heaven. And, um, and she said, well, you know, son, that, that may be true. She said, but the part I held is still laying right there. Oh, wow. And now that, you make me cry. Well, okay. uh, uh, that's the perspective, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's true. But the soul that made that person who he was is really not there. But no, we know that. That's right. But that's right. That's, um, you know, there's no words. But the, what I'm trying to get across is there's not a right or wrong way to handle that. Right. You know, it, some people may think, well, if you stand at a grave and weep, well, that's not spiritual because if you were spiritual, you'd accept the fact that they're in heaven. <laughs> no, no. Mm -mm. I think everybody has to handle that the way they feel mm -hmm. led to handle it. Mm -hmm. And in time, there mm -hmm. may come a time you're not at, you don't have to go. Yeah. But that doesn't mean because they're, they're, as close as you know your thoughts right you know, but. well my mother was a big um you know you don't have to go to church to have church you can if you're at the lake you can sit down under a tree and have a great talk with god and and so i truly believe if there are times that i can't handle it i'll just have a little talk with god and then i'm good yeah. and and i said it's funny because i used to go to the cemetery out of had to and then it was out of thought i should have and then it was out of maybe I ought to do this. And now it's, why am I doing this? Because in truth, I know he's not there, you know. And, and that Dale Earnhardt shirt and pair of Wrangler jeans doesn't matter, you know. But, but I, that's where I left him. But I know that's not where he stayed, you know. So I got over it. But it took different periods of my time. And, and I would go sometimes and I would feel sad. Sometimes I would feel mad. Sometimes I would say, what'd you leave me for? And other times I'd be 
You didn't do it by choice, and I would accept it, you know, and it just, you deal with every emotion possible at a grave. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the hardest thing for me, and, and Lord help the monument people, because I couldn't make up my mind about a monument for months, and I finally put a line on it from a song from the 60s. It is such a depressing song, and why I chose that line is beyond me. But then there's one thing at his foot at the stone. It says, a heart of gold stopped beating, two shining eyes at rest. God broke our hearts to prove he only takes the best. I was walking through the Hinton Cemetery taking flowers to somebody else's grave, and I saw that, and I said, oh, my God, that's him, because he had these incredible blue eyes, and he was always smiling. He, he might have been mischievously smiling, but he was always smiling. And... I just thought, I remember the end of his life when his eyes turned copper colored because his liver quit. And I remember losing those gorgeous blue eyes. And I thought his shining eyes will always be looking down at me. And so that, that was perfect. It was perfect. Now that other line, what was I thinking? Well, I should have waited you were, six what you were months thinking. to do the monument. <laughs> it's what you were going through at that time. My, yeah. my aunt used a classic one on Timmy's grave when, he, when her boy died. He, she wrote, Jesus walked by and picked a rose. <gasps> yes, that's you know, a good one. There's some great lines. On Marie's is, um, uh, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. Then on the opposite side of the headstone says, resurrection ground. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, and I think that that is something that I've been fascinated with, and so, especially some of the older, older, older headstones out there mm -hmm. is what people have had him printed on there. But, you know, it's, it's what people were feeling at the time right. that they ordered that. So. Well, the song that I chose is called One Love, One Life, One Dream Forever, and it's by Bob Braun, who died in the early 2000s, like 2003 or something. He was from Europe. This is a song, it was very depressing, but it was done, it was the most recorded wedding song in the 60s, hmm. and it was the song. So we used to listen to that song all the time, so I put it on his monument. And then I thought about that, and I thought, it is not just one love, because if you're left here, then possibly you will fall in love again. Sure. Possibly your life will change. So I, I think I made a bad decision, but, but I've gotten through it. And for anybody facing today losing a spouse, tomorrow would have been his birthday. I'm fine. I'm mm -hmm. fine. It took, and somebody asked me um, last week, she just lost her husband, and she hugged me, and she said, when does it get better? I told her this, and I truly mean this, five years, five years. It took me five years to become human again. It took me five years to feel that I could be having a good time. It took me five years to feel that I could laugh and tell jokes again. I felt guilty, you know, because my life is so good, and I, I had no reason to feel guilty, but I did. And, and today, I feel blessed, I feel so lucky, I feel so fortunate. If it gets any better, I'm gonna bust a gut. So, but it took five years five years and don't do that to yourselves you know if you're going through something don't do what I did to me because it wasn't fair to me to be mm -hmm. honest with you I wasn't fair to myself well so, the life that they lived they intended to improve your life even whether they were there or not right. so uh, they want you to go on and, and be encouraged because they're having the time of their life well I, I want to read something because this is something I should have I should have taught myself and I wish I had listened you're a great preacher, and, and you've done some sermons that I took away something. When I left the church, I would think, he's dead on right. He is dead on right. You have to, you always have to look up, and you always have to be positive. So, so this is something that Joel says, be joyful always, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And that is so true. I find today, I giggle about the stupidest things, and I think, why am I so happy now? I'm allowing myself to be happy. I don't feel that I have to be depressed. I don't feel that I have to pay for something. I don't feel that because I committed this terrible sin a hundred years ago, I have to do, you know, I don't feel like I can keep myself down. And, and I think I've learned so much. I've learned so much. But listening to good preachers will, will do it for you. Now, in Psalms, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continu continually be in my mouth. At all times means in the good times as well as the tough times. That's something you taught me. The Bible tells us to stay full of joy no matter what we are facing. And you have always been so positive, so upbeat. I don't care what hits you in the face. You've always been positive. The joy of the Lord is our source of strength, and the enemy knows it. He knows that if he can get you down and discouraged, before long you'll be weak and feeble, and he'll be able to easily defeat you. Now, don't you feel that's true? Oh, it is true. It is true. It is true. And we have to keep the devil away by being full of joy. When you're full of joy and have a good attitude, you keep yourself strong. 
That positive attitude of faith paves the way for God to work miracles in your life. It paves the way for God to turn your situation around. Do you believe that? Sure. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Decide today to have a good attitude. Keep yourself full of his joy by meditating on the goodness and promises of God. Be full of joy of the Lord. You'll soon experience supernatural strength and discover the victorious life God has planned for you. I believe that with every bit of my being. I have seen me come from a young widow ready to leave here with a nine-year-old child, you know, and, and I just, I had it planned that somebody else could raise Nick, somebody could do this, somebody could do that. I didn't need to be here because I wasn't fulfilled or complete or whatever I needed. And then all of a sudden, the right people, God allowed the right people to come into my life, you being one of them. And then all of a sudden, I started listening to people wiser than me. And, and you know, a couple of my friends whose husbands died the same year JS did, are still having a tough, tough time. And I tell them all, it is okay to have fun, it is okay to smile, it is okay. Have you ever seen me happier? Uh, no, not in what you have been here It is here amazing. Recently. It right. is amazing because I'm just having a good time. Well, and you're letting yourself be. Yeah, That's I right. am. I am. And I did not allow myself to have a good time. I was. Somebody told me at the first of the year, I was too focused on work. I was too focused on making everything perfect for everybody. And they said, you know, you really are a person. You really can take time for yourself. And I said, oh, I don't think so. And then I thought about it and I said, well, why shouldn't I? Why shouldn't I take time for myself? Yeah. So I have done that and, and it, it is amazing to me. You know, it just, and, and being around people like Rita, we sat on the bus the other day talking to her when we were up at Carnesville. <clears throat> we came away there, we were giggling, we were laughing. The spirit of the people I surround myself brings me through every single week. That's every right. single week That's right. and and can have you ever seen anybody as positive as she is no and no. it's funny and it's crazy oh, and y'all yeah. one day we're going to get some blurps for you we're going to show you some crazy things miss rita Ooh, does i'll tell you because on the bus she is a trip she is a trip but she brings such a spirit with her mm -hmm. and i hope that someday to be what she is That's you know right. I, I just want to be as uplifting as she is yeah well we all ought to always look to be an encouragement to somebody mm -hmm. else you know mm -hmm. Uh, to for people to want to be around um, around you, you know, there's some people you think. Uh, no, no, don't want to. You know the old phrase, you know, how are you doing? You know, uh -huh. you're afraid you ask you some really people. You really don't want to know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, now this is our prayer for today, dear Father. Thank you for filling my life with joy. Thank you that I am blessed and cannot be cursed. Thank you that in all things you cause me to triumph. Thank you for the strength within me that comes from that joy. I bless you today and rejoice in your goodness. Now this is from a book I read every day of my life. It is 30 Thoughts for Victorious Living by Joel Osteen. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you something. You can live a victorious life, sure. but you have to make the decision yourself. That's right. You have to make the decision yourself. And, and thank you, Joel. Thank you. Thank you to my nine-year-old child. Thank you to you because tomorrow, Lori Tipton called me last night. We had a long, long talk from Alaska, and she said, you're really doing great, aren't you? I said, I can't believe it. I mean, I look around now. And I think, oh my gosh, my life is so good because a few years ago, I was focused on nothing but everybody but me. I didn't care about me. I didn't care what happened to me. All I was worried about was making things happen for other people. And then one day I looked around and said, I deserve this. I deserve this. So thank you, God. I'm so happy now. I can't hardly stand it. But another thank you. Last night, uh, one of the churches up in Mineral Bluff brought us, or McCaysville, brought us $200. We're going to have an announcement on the community calendar. They're going to have Vacation Bible School, and they're going to have the Glory Bound and the Wilson family singing at the church this week. A tiny, tiny, I believe it's Panther Town Church. We're going to have that on the calendar today. They brought us a $200 donation for the community meal. Thank you to every single church who has stepped up and helped us. Thank you to every individual. Um, there are so many of you. I'm not going to start naming because I'll get in trouble. I'll forget somebody. But it would not happen without the volunteers. Now, you have agreed to come and sing there one Monday. Mm -hmm. We're going to work it out for you or your family to come and sing. There's a spirit in that building like nothing I've ever seen. Yeah. Like nothing I've ever seen from the, from the people serving to the people cleaning up to the people bringing in food to the people we are ministering to through having this fellowship meal. Well, and that's part of joy. I mean, being able to reach out even, and it doesn't have to take money, service Mm -hmm. Being a servant and serving people, it doesn't cost you anything. Right. I mean, but it but it has returns that are are continual. 
um, just try, try to be a help to somebody and to, to know that you're making a difference, right. you know, that you are important to somebody. It, it really does help you, to, it helps you be happy. Oh, it does, it does. And when the lady walked up and handed me the check last night, I just thought, you know, I got there late, I brought some food, I had to leave and go to the radio station, I had some stuff to do there, I walked in, and she handed, and I just thought, God is so good, yeah. you know, she just handed me $200. So once again, the community steps up, and it is amazing. Right now we're going to take a break and we're going to go to the diplomats. Now, you got to hear them um, if you were lucky enough to show up at the friend raiser. The DVD is still available. We will have the DVDs. We'll be playing trivia next Tuesday when we are at Town & Country. It is on the 16th. Town & Country It's a Tuesday. We'll be playing trivia. Jen Roberts in charge of trivia. She's going to ask questions from this whole week's show. Y'all better pay attention. We'll be giving away some Heart of Home cookbooks, some calendars, some DVDs. This DVD features the diplomats with you. So it's the first time as a group y'all were recorded. Right, right. Now it shows the specialty songs of each one of you and then it shows Archie Watkins. It was amazing to have him there that night. He's traveling with y'all a little bit and his spirit too has changed. Yeah. He's very happy, very positive, very upbeat because he's traveling with his young wife Cindy. That's so right. he's having a ball. Right now we are going to go to the diplomats and when we come back we're going to our sponsors. Today we have the Bargain Barn, Huff Drugs and Papa's Pizza. Be sure and spend some time and some money with the people who support us. Jesus is coming soon. We'll soon be more happy forevermore when we meet on that shore, free from all care. Rising up in the sky, telling this world goodbye. Oh, we then shall fly, glory to share. Jesus is coming soon. singers out there. I can, and he went, and everybody looked over there and paid no attention to us. <laughs> I seen that. I know you worked hard, but it didn't do a bit of good. Would you like to hear a bass song out of that gentleman over there? <laughs> I tell you what I want to do. I'm just humble enough to do it, Jimmy. I'm a I'm going to feature him on an old bass song. If you like the way Joseph does it, you let him know about it. Now, if you don't, you just sit there and stare at it like an old mule looking at a wooden gate. Would you do that? Joseph comes from a little community called Booger Holler. And they're set back, Booger Holler is set back in the ain't, in the Andy Griffiths days. Yeah. 
had that, their Aunt B's. Yeah. They had their Floyd's Barbershop. And that's where we found old Goober and Gomer oh, at, right there. Uh, go with it, Mark. Welcome back. Okay, Sunshine, that was some pretty good music. That was fun. That was fun. Now, Jesus is coming soon. I, I didn't know that the Oak Ridge Boys did it originally, and mm -hmm. I hate that I don't like their version, but I like the peppy upbeat. I think I that too. is so cool. Now, you're going in the studio to record a new CD. What mm -hmm. music have y'all chosen? Well, it's uh, a lot of it's new stuff. Mm -hmm. um, did Jimmy uh, write some of it? Yes, he did. And then um, Resurrection Ground we're going to do with the third verse, so that'll be on there. So. Uh -huh. Uh, a lot of it I've never even heard myself, so it's going to be interesting. Well, there's a song I'm going to give y'all. When Jimmy and Rita come to spend the night Monday night, I'm bringing them a song that's written by Alan Abernathy, who happens to be the DJ up at the radio station that I work with on Sundays. He wrote this song. When we heard it yesterday, I said, okay, you need to give that to the diplomats. The diplomats yeah. are going to get it. It um, is that song that Jimmy could take and turn it into your, it could be a great song for y'all, yeah. an absolutely great song for y'all. So um, when Alan wrote it, he, he was telling us a little bit of the story about how he writes and when things come to him, and, and it's kind of like Mark, it either comes all at once or it doesn't come at all, right, you know, and, right. and he said he knows that God is in his writing. Sure. When you hear this song, I think you will think it is a perfect diplomat song, so we're going to share that with you when they're in town next week. Now, something that's going to happen this weekend, and we have been trying and trying to get this on the calendar. For some weird reason, our email went to Egypt or somewhere. But anyway, we have a homecoming at Pantertown Baptist Church, June 14th, 10.30 a.m. Now, let me tell you why it's so important that you hang out there, not just the good food. I bet there'll be some good food. 
Glory Bound and the Wilson family will be there. Now let me tell you about Glory Bound. They have got an awesome, awesome piano player. Derek is one of the best. So try to spend some time there. This is on the way. It's on Highway 60, I think just outside McKaysville on the way to Mineral Bluff. Little tiny church right on the road. They brought us $200 last night. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much to each and every one of you who donated one penny of that money. It will go toward the community meal in McKaysville. So thank you very much. And uh, Glory Bound and the Wilson family from Blairsville will be on. They will be at their homecoming this week. Also, their vacation Bible school starts on the 15th through the 19th, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Everyone welcome classes for all ages. So please get in touch with those folks and spend some time with them and, and learn to love them like we have. Um, just a good group of people who stepped up to the plate last night. And um, to be honest with you, we have said it a thousand times, just as we're about to run out of something, somebody walks in and meets our need. Do you see that happening a lot? Quite a bit. Quite That's a right. bit. Oh yeah, I, I see it in, in my own personal life too. Right. I mean how, you know, just the Lord just works it out just at the right time. Mm -hmm. and, and from an angle you probably wouldn't even... Never think about it. No, you'd never no, even think no. about it. But. That's why it's important on the other side of that to the Lord impresses you to do something to be that person to somebody else. That's too, right. So, yeah. Well, there's a song called The Chain of Love, and I can't remember who does it, but it's about a, a waitress who's nine months pregnant, and she's standing on her feet waiting on tables, and, and her husband, whose name is Joe, is a mechanic, and he stops and helps this lady. The lady wants to pay him. He won't take any money. This nine-month pregnant waitress is his wife. She leaves her a $100 tip. The chain of love can be shared in every single thing we do. There's mm -hmm. not a single day you can't bless somebody else. Right. Whether it be going to a nursing home and singing, you know. Smile. Yeah, yeah smile, smile at them. Smile at them. Yeah. Give somebody a break. Yeah. We're going to play um, a couple of songs today, one of them during the community calendar. We're going to go to the community calendar, and I want you to listen to this song. Very positive, very upbeat song by a lady who's no longer with us, but I want you to listen to this, and if you can call me at 866-939-2329, I'm going to give you one of her CDs. I'm not going to show it to you because you little eagle eyes sitting out there will figure out who she is. Now, if you know who is singing this song, call me at 866-939-2329. After we do the community calendar, we're going to talk about an event coming up here in Gilmer County on the 19th. I will be there. I think the motorhome will be there. We'll, several of us will be there to spend time at Gaha raising money for Gilmer County. We are doing Gilmer Arts and Heritage Association. Barker Brothers will be there, and Jen's going to give us all the details when we come back from the community calendar. You love me, and it's inviting to go where life is more exciting. But I was raised on country sunshine. I was raised on country sunshine, green grass beneath my feet, running through fields of daisies, wading through the creek. You love me and it's inviting to go where life is more exciting. But I was raised on country sunshine. I was raised on country sunshine. With the simple things A Saturday night dance A picture show And the joy that the bluebird brings I love you Please believe me I wouldn't want you to ever leave me But I was raised on country sunshine There's just something about the morning That makes each day a joy see inside of me I love you please believe me I wouldn't want you to ever leave me but I was raised on country sunshine yes you love me and it's inviting to go where life is more exciting but I was raised on country sunshine
Dottie West was singing Country Sunshine. Now, Mom worked for Coca-Cola in the marketing department, head of the advertising department and marketing, and this was a song that Coca-Cola used. What was another popular song Coca-Cola used? Um, I'd like to teach the world to sing. I'd like to teach the world to sing. Do you remember that song? Yes. Perfect harmony. Yes, yes. How many times do you think that song has been recorded? Oh, my goodness. Oh, I bet you can't even count. Can't no, you? no, no. We're welcoming Jen Roberts, and we're here to talk about something near and dear to my heart, the Barker Brothers. Oh, I can't think of a better group to talk about, it, unless it's Matt and the Diplomats. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but we thoroughly love the Barker Brothers, and the Gilmer Arts and Heritage Association does a series of picnic by the rivers every summer and fall, and our first picnic will be on Friday night, June the 19th, at the ETC Pavilion. Mm -hmm. Right on the place. river. The breeze comes off the water and kids go down and wade and people are fishing down there. It's just, it's just wonderful. You talk about God being in a place that you don't even oh, think yeah. about. He's uh -huh. right there. Uh -huh. But we'll, Gaha will have their meeting, um, very brief little annual meeting, like, hello, we're glad to have you here and we'll go from here. And the Barkers will start singing about 7 o'clock and will sing until about 10. And I know they're going to have the motor home with the air conditioning on to run in and refresh themselves yes, a little bit. Yes, yes. <laughs> but the, the tables are $60 a table. And, and that's from four. We've seen eight scrunched into a table. But it's mm -hmm. so much fun. It's done, quote, Chastain style. Mm -hmm. We've had silver. We've had crystal. We've had orchids. We've had donkeys. You just, I mean, the, the excitement of people decorating and dressing to match their table is so much fun. And we do judging about 7 o'clock and award a couple of prizes mm -hmm. for that. And just watching can people. Can we do one John Deere since I have a new John Deere apron? We can do <laughs> anything you want to do. You and I are hosting the Barker's uh -huh. table that Let's night. Let's do John Deere. Wouldn't I think we, cute? oh, we've got all those cute little tractors to yeah, do. And yeah. we can. I mean, I've got, oh, we've got several things we uh -huh. can do. Yeah. I think John Deere would be so cute. There are so, now, anyone out there in the listening audience, do not steal our theme. <laughs> That's right. Not that any of these people would be noted, yeah. would, would do that. John Mahan, stay away from John Deere. <laughs> That's right. I was just thinking, you said some, well, you know, like donkeys and stuff, some people won't even have to dress up, will they? <laughs> Well, you know, someone said one night, oh, he came in, he came as himself, but it was, <laughs> not good. but he really did, he had on a donkey outfit. No, I wasn't talking about whoever that thing. was. So let me well, clear that up. Well, we're not going to say who it was. No, we're not going to say that. I wasn't talking about but that. But they I did an adorable that. zoo theme. <laughs> sure. And that was very cute. Oh, wow. And I, we said, what are you doing? And he said, this is the only costume that I could find, so that's what he wore. Well, it worked. But we do a lot of fun things, and, and Gaha works so hard to bring arts into you know, Gilmer County, we work closely with Sharp Top, with people in Blue Ridge, to, to, to do what we can because times are tough. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of the arts programs in schools have been cut, so we've been able to do some um, scholarships to, to, to young people and some art programs and some musical programs. Uh, Brian Barantine from the high school is on our board of directors with us. and. So it's something that we're trying to do to the, for the community. Mm -hmm. uh, just right now, we have the Poetry of Flowers art show that's Beautiful. At, in the gallery at Gaha. And we want to invite everyone to come by. It's a program in conjunction with the Garden Club of Ella J. Mm -hmm. And the floral arrangements that match the paintings are absolutely beautiful. Now, how beautiful. much does it cost to go see this? <clears throat> a quarter's worth of gas to drive down to Dalton Street. Wow. Free admission. We do not charge admission to our programs. Uh -huh. So we encourage everyone to come by, uh, look at this. The, we, we change out the gallery periodically, right. and it's just a beautiful, beautiful afternoon. Right now, we've got a gallery full of prizes. This is a juried show. Mm -hmm. Candy Day has been our, our judge for this. And we've got some, there are some pieces there that will absolutely stop you in your tracks. Now, are they for sale? Uh, some of them are, yes. Okay. Some of them are very expensive. Some of them are surprisingly inexpensive. Mm 
Uh, so this fry very expensive to me. Hmm. Like buying a Larry Dotson. Okay. Okay. Twelve, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Now, to me, that's okay. expensive. But wouldn't it be wouldn't it be cool to get to see something like that? You know, well, because what an opportunity to do it locally. Well, some of this work, when you look at some of these people, they are doing jury shows all over the country, mm -hmm. and are winning first, second, and third prizes. So it's an excellent opportunity. You don't have to drive all the way to Atlanta. You know, there are a lot of people who live up here that think going to, to the High Museum or one of the museums down there is like driving to the end of the, the world. The last time I drove to Atlanta, she suckered me into going to the Fox. And she, you know, she said, it'll be okay. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, no. Oh, no. 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I am death grip on my steering wheel. <laughs> I am tied up in knots. And she's saying, I'll drive. I said, shut up. I'm driving. <laughs> I do not she like really was. Atlanta. She really I was. I had a death grip. I do not like that drive. This is amazing that we can see the same things locally. Well, you know, you talk about the Monday dinner that we do. Uh -huh. There's some wonderful people in McKaysville and Copper Hill. And a group of the senior citizens from Fannin County went down to the King Tut exhibit three different times, had gone down to see the terracotta soldiers mm -hmm. that were down there. So this is not anything in that, in that line. Right. But this is still a beautiful show. Mm -hmm. Come by, go to one of our local restaurants, like you and I say mm -hmm. so often. Oh, every day. Support what's local, because we have people here in Gilmer County, restaurants that are in dire trouble. Well, in, in Pickens and Fannin County also. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we're trying to do that we would not do. Gaha needs money desperately, so mm -hmm. we do events like Picnic by the River and uh, other programs, but we and don't want to charge for this. Okay, at $60 a table, if you bring six to eight of your friends, you're going to get in for less than $10 to hear the Barkers. Well, we've even got a, a, a really good deal for them, too, because if they don't want to come and do a picnic table, they can bring a lawn chair, uh -huh. and it's $10 a person. Right. Okay, and at $10 a person, what could you do cheaper, closer to home? Great entertainment. You can't even go to the Swan Drive-In. No, no. And, and take popcorn and, and a Coke no. with you for that. Well, can I buy like five tickets and let's give them away? You can buy as many as you okay. want to give. Let's do that. So on Thursday of this week, we will give away five tickets. We'll start this Thursday, maybe give away a couple Thursday, a couple Monday. Let's do that. Because um, some people might not even have the $10, but to hear the Barker Brothers locally. Yesterday, we know they were in Knoxville. They performed their new song that is about to be released called Knoxville that Angie wrote. And it is going to be, um, hopefully you will hear it every time you go to the tourist places in Knoxville. It's going to be one of those songs Great. that will, you'll get in your head and you'll hear it over and over. They are local talent, but they are some of the world's best. We have people who come with their lawn chair and take out a McDonald's or a Burger King or a homemade sandwich. And they're mm -hmm. welcome to do that. Mm -hmm. We just want to enjoy a wonderful evening. We've got two more picnics planned. One is on August the 22nd. The other one is, um, let me check the date, September the 12th. And one of those will be a hardcore rock and roll surf music, just a genuinely good fun time. Are the time Beach Boys going to be there? Well, not the Beach Boys, <laughs> but somebody that's probably a little more sober than they are right now. <laughs> A couple At of bands we're talking it. to and, and working with. So we're looking forward to that, and we just want to invite everyone to come down and, and spend time with us. It's a fellowship not unlike our Monday night. It's a mm -hmm. different kind of fellowship, but there's a lot of, of rivalry, but there's a lot of friendship and talking mm -hmm. and laughter. Uh, last year during one of the picnics, we did uh, a spur-of-the-moment auction of T-shirts for a young man here suffering brain cancer. Right, Justin. And before yeah. we knew it, we had a husband on one side of the park and a wife on the other side of the park, and they didn't realize they were bidding against each other. Now, I was auctioning, and I was terrible. I didn't tell them. I just said, okay, here, here, here. And we got a, a $5 T-shirt up to $690. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And so I, I thank Bob and Melinda Haddon greatly for that. But it's just that kind of community giving mm -hmm. that we work constantly on. We're doing a, a series of classes now at Gaha, and we even have some money that we can do scholarships for individuals from uh, pastels to basic paintbrush or PowerPoint, basic photography. So we urge anyone who's interested in the arts in any way to call Gaha at 706-635. 5605 mm -hmm. and come play with us. Okay, let's talk about Tuesday. You will be in charge. You will be doing trivia. So are you going to tell people? Y'all better pay attention to what we talk about this week because she will choose the trivia questions. 
we will be giving away Heart of the Home cookbooks, Heart of the Home t-shirts, calendars, some ETC products, different things we're going to get from marketing. We will be giving away a couple of Hans um, shirts and a couple of his cookbooks. Hans will be there. It is going to be a great day of fellowship because people are calling, whining, fussing because we don't do the live remotes anymore. It has been very tough, but there was a very expensive venture. So sure. I've taken it on myself to load the motorhome <laughs> with my co-host and we will be traveling to different places. We chose town and country because of their connection with Hans and, and all the things they have done for him. It is a great facility in Fannin County. Beautiful. You will be in charge of trivia. Now you're going to do some basic ones that almost anybody will know. Hope I do. But if you watch our show, you need to know. Remember that the diplomats are from did their homecoming at Villa Rica, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Remember that they're, in my opinion, his signature song is Resurrection Ground. Oh. Remember these things because the trivia queen here will be writing, I'm the princess, she's the queen. We'll be writing the trivia. And you make it, you always fix it so they win. Now you well, don't no, fix it. Well, let's not say it that <laughs> way. I don't fix it in the she terms. gives them a hint. And she'll say, now don't you remember? Because she hates to see people not know the answer. Well, I don't want to <laughs> say on the air that I've even been known to hand them the question and the answer and say, why don't you read that to me? And they'll read me the question and they'll read the answer and they look at me and go, I don't know. And I said, yes, but you just answered it. We try, we try to, to have we something so We give away so little that, things and we want everybody to leave with a little something. Now, well, I've gotten 10 emails about yesterday's birthday cake and the candles. Uh -huh. Where can they buy the candles? They want to have it. Is that going to be a trivia? I love that one last night. Three people asked me last night, can that be a trivia question next week? And so I'm already making my list. And yes, I'm making my list and I'm checking yeah. it twice. Yeah. And yeah. we'll see who's naughty and not watched and who's been nice and watched. That's right. Well, we're going to have um, some homemade chicken salad from a gentleman who goes to the Church of God in McCaysville. He makes fabulous chicken salad. Oh, he made those wonderful deviled eggs last well, night. Well, and we're going oh. to test his chicken salad with his recipe and then using Hans Cajun Joe. Cajun Joe is hotter than Hades. I told Woo! him last night, I so said, be we'll careful see. with that. That'll, that'll get <laughs> it you will a burn little it. bit. So we'll see. We're going to do some recipes using Hans Sugar Baby. We're going to feature Hans products, and obviously we are featuring Hans. Mm -hmm. We are lifting that young man up. We are not going to let him fail. He was on television in Atlanta today. He is looking very, very well. We are praying every single day that he will have a full recovery. But it is a long road to go. I used his sugar baby at a reception we did for artists at Gaha one night. And I bought the really big strawberries and did sour cream and uh, sugar babies and a little bit of, of whipped cream mm -hmm. with the strawberries and the sugar baby and then the one with the lavender that's a very different flavor. Oh, very different. Very yeah. different. But people love dipping the strawberries in the sour cream and then into the lavender salt. Really? Wow. Was, it was phenomenal. Wow. And we went through a whole bottle of the sugar babies and a whole jar of the, the lavender. Well, one of the other things we're going to feature on this show is called Coconut Surprise. And a lady, um, a young man brought me the recipe the other day. I read the recipe and I thought, that can't be right. I'm going to try it exactly like it says. And it says you dip a chocolate chip cookie in milk. You know what I would do if I dipped a chocolate yeah, chip yeah, cookie in milk? I'd long. eat that bad boy. Yeah, I would, too. I would. It'd be gone in a hurry. <laughs> but I'm going to make a large thing of the coconut surprise, and we're going to try that. We're trying some new recipes, so if you would please, if you have an old tried and true recipe, if you have a favorite recipe, if you have a new recipe, please bring it to us at the show, and then maybe the next show we'll use it. But oh, we wait just, a minute. Tell them to make it and bring it to the Monday night meal and make share. Make it later. That's right. And we'll have a discussion about it. Well, and, and a peanut butter pie that we love at the meal, please show up with that pie on Tuesday. We, we have that on my website now. We want to share that recipe. It is basic. It is simple. And I said, that's the thing about my recipes. Hand me my cookbook, please. They are simple, southern, and scrumptious. And we will be featuring my recipes next week as we do the meet and greet. We want to let you sample some things. We did wings from Blackberry Ridge Eatery last year with blackberries on it. Blackberry and barbecue sauce. Unbelievably good. I, when she said yeah. blackberries on wings, I thought, She's I on. love you. <laughs> And I'll try it, it but I really right think I'm, right. I'm waiting for the buffalo sauce. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I was amazed. It was yeah, absolutely, it was we stood there and ate 
We ate. I blue. bet. We ate I these bet. all. <laughs> yeah, we ate. We that. all had blue tongues. But next next Tuesday, please put us on your calendar. We will be meeting and greeting you at Town and Country in Fannin County. We will show up in the motorhome. Hopefully, the graphics will have our face on it, and when we pull up, you'll know it. The diplomats will be singing. The Barker mm -hmm. brothers will be singing. It will be a day of fellowship and friends, and it is just the beginning of us meeting and greeting you. We will be at the Singing in the Mountains. You can't be there because you're going to be singing somewhere else that mm -hmm. night on July the 11th. Thank it's you on for a Saturday putting me night. in the choir. Yes, you're in the Thank choir. You for, for yes, you're in the choir. Me in the choir. I'll get you for that one. Yes, yeah. I know. <laughs> They'd rather have you than me. <laughs> Trust me. But we will be meeting and greeting. We just decided while school's out and while we have a driver available, we're going to be driving, we're going to be going, we're going to be visiting y'all. You're going to see us probably more often than you ever thought. We will show up at the Monday McCaysville Mill. Mm -hmm. We've already decided on that. We're going to come there one night. We're going to have some entertainment. We are going to try to be as available to you as possible. Well, a couple of people who heard you talk about the meet and greet who used to bring wonderful little goodies to the live remotes right. I've already spoken to. So right. um, and Mike and that. Sonia at Pizza King are mm -hmm. going to, to give us some wonderful certificates to give. Mm -hmm. Thank and you they ahead have of time. The best wings. Oh, I they love have their the wings. best everything. Yeah. And let me thank the Dairy Queen again yesterday. Absolutely. Our Jeff Wimpy and his crew over there at Dairy Queen and Ella J could not be better. Mm -hmm. I walked in and I said, Okay, I got a challenge, here's what I need, here's how much money I have and she said, Wait a minute, this one's bigger and better. So thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, you to thank the Dairy you, Queen. You. Also the best biscuits in town. Right. Um, Good I'm, people. Good wonderful people. People. Yeah. people at Davis House. So we're going to have some this nice giveaways. This is going to make it possible. Yeah, this will make it possible because we couldn't go out and do what we're doing. You know, diesel prices are up. Um, having us all come together is going to be tough, but I, I've committed to make this happen. I'm going to make it happen. We're going to be meeting and greeting you. Right now we're going to have a trivia question that is, so simple. If you get it wrong, just go get under your bed and hide for the rest of the day. Where and when is our first meet and greet? Call us at 866-939-2329 and you will win an autographed Sherry Martin cookbook. And it has some simple, simple recipes in it. The next time I produce a cookbook, I'd like to have some of your recipes. So please send them to me. Call us at 866-uh-oh, the pen quit. Here I come. 866-939-2329. And let me know. But we truly look forward to getting to know you. I've gotten to know so many of you, and so many of you have taught me so much about life. You have taught me so much about life. You have taught me about your giving. You have taught me that we can all do a little something, just a little something. Now, how long have you been involved in Gaha? About four years. Okay. Love it. It... It just makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. But doing something for the community, and this is such a, an important program, between the, the, the schools that we work with and the classes that we do and the things that we do, uh, you've been so wonderful with donations to our auctions, that beautiful print that you gave us, and so many things that you've done. It's just an outlet. You know me, I tend to work. Monday night we thought, okay, we're going to do bean, We're going to do a dinner on Monday night. We're going to do beans and cornbread and soup beans. Well, it has just morphed into something totally different. Totally different. I now go up between 11 and 12 and start cooking. Mm -hmm. But it's important, and it, it just important. needs to be done. I told you about last night. After we cleaned up, and every, you, had, you had gone on to the radio station, I went outside, and it was about 8.15, and there were three of people sitting outside who were just watching traffic because they didn't have anywhere to go. Mm. And it, when you think about that, they had been there with us for about two and a half hours. They mm -hmm. were laughing. They were talking mm -hmm. to people. It's given people an outlet. Uh, right. the, lo the, the little lady that comes in who's 90 years old who can afford to go anywhere she wants to for dinner, but she doesn't have friends right. or doesn't have many people that she can spend time you with. Know, and she I has three rooms of close friends mm -hmm. when she's in there. Yeah, that's the Just key. Just all of a sudden, it's every... The, people, the things that we've learned about people... And we have to say good morning to Carla and Laura because oh. they hadn't been there in three weeks and we found out we miss them. she had been bitten by a tick mm. and has been very, very sick. So I called out over the air one day and I said, Carla and Laura, where are you? And they showed up last night. She has been very, very sick. So we notice when somebody's missing. We notice when somebody's there. We care about what's happening. And um, last night she still was a little pale, but it got into her bloodstream. So y'all be careful when you're outside right yeah. now because this is the time of year. It is. I it had is. two on me last week. 
just mm -hmm. out in my garden. I walked mm -hmm. in and both times I caught them early. Mm -hmm. But you've got to be so careful. And the ag office here, there was an article in the paper the other day about how, how bad the, the fleas and ticks are yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. So we do need to be careful. You know, we've got Brenda Lewis and her husband. Everybody now wants to know which pudding, what kind of pudding oh, is this lady going to walk she in the door with? Oh, Holy my cow. But you know, the first day she came to me, she had tears in her eyes and she said, thank you for including me in this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. She wouldn't miss it. Now next week, we do have to say Salem's having revival. So please, if you get an opportunity, go to Salem number two. They're having revival next week. They won't be with us next week. That's going to be a sad day because we're used to Brenda's puddings. But, but the week after next, I hear from a wonderful source that it's going to be a cherry pudding. <laughs> she makes a pudding very much like a banana pudding with the vanilla wafers, but she puts sour cream in it, and she just does all sorts of things. Last night it was coconut. Oh, yes. Now, we need to say a special prayer for their granddaughter, and I apologize for not having her name. She's two or three years old. Two. Yeah. She'll be taken to Emory this week, and they're checking to see if... if She's had some problems with her legs, if mm -hmm. there's arthritis or what might be causing this. Mm -hmm. So if you'll just mm -hmm. put uh, the Lewis's granddaughter in your thoughts and prayers. Mm -hmm. Now, have you got a birthday, a young man? I actually have two. This is a special one. These are twin sisters, Joyce Carver and them. Joan Fountain. I happen to yep. be related to them. Yeah. How well, about we that? I want to say happy birthday to them from yesterday. Uh, twin sisters. The yep. That's yep. right. Joan, Joyce Carver and Joan Fountain. Sweet, so, sweet lady. Twins. And we've got another one coming in here. It's actually an anniversary. 47th anniversary for Edward and Jerry Sue Massengale, and their anniversary is today, 47 years. 47 years. Can you imagine amazing. that? My husband and I had 30 great years before I lost him. And listening to you this morning talk about JS brought a lot of that back. Bob's been gone, was 19 years this past Christmas, mm -hmm. but it was like it was yesterday. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. you talk about JS, you can still smell him, you can still sense mm -hmm. him. It's 19 years, it's still there. It's strange. It's, it's strange. easier, but, but you, it's... You, but, but you move on. And, and, and I said, that's the thing I wanted to share today. Absolutely. A year ago today, I was boarding a plane, not today, a year ago, two years ago today, I was boarding a plane to go to Alaska. When Lori called me last night, she said, do you remember what we were doing a year ago? And I, or two years ago, I said, yes, I do. And she said, do you remember how you cried as we landed in Anchorage? I was on the plane crying hysterically, and the people around me thought the plane was going down because I couldn't quit crying. And, and they said, she's having a premonition. I said, oh, no. But, but I'm over it. You know, I moved on. And, and well, they made Lord us strong. for giving me the strength. They yeah. made us strong. Absolutely. The day Bob took my hand and he said, love me enough to go on. Yeah. And boy, that was a, I thought at that time, that's a heavy yoke to put around my shoulders today. Yeah, yeah. But that's what he wanted. He said, love me enough well, to you go honor on and live your life. And that's on. what that's I did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Very that's much right. so. Everything that's I did. Right. I listened to you, I listened to y'all sing Saturday night. Yeah. I want to, let me compliment Matt for a minute. Uh -oh. I've watched you for a long time. And for a period of time there, even when you were singing with, with the other group, you didn't, you didn't glow or you didn't sparkle or something seemed to be missing. And maybe I didn't know it was missing till I've watched you with the diplomats. Right. There is a smile in your face. There's a mm -hmm. smile. Your eyes sparkle. But more importantly, when you sing on that stage, see, I'm getting goosebumps. You radiate a feeling. And a she lot of us were talking about this. She was the one behind me shouting this. Saturday night. Yeah. No, you stand up there, <laughs> it and amazing. it is such a testament but to see the happiness. The couple behind me said, look at that man, that man's full of God, but he's happy. Mm -hmm. But you have a, it's wonderful to watch. And when you sing, it's just amazing. And I've loved the diplomats, yeah. but listening to you with Rita and, and Jimmy and, and Corey, it just, my heart sings. And I brought some photos, some, some shots from well, the other night. Go, we're going to go to the photos, but I can tell you next Tuesday, this show, this morning, will be devoted to the diplomats. No other guests. The diplomats will be here. You'll be here. It will be so much fun. And then from here, we will leave and go do the meet and greet in Fannin County. Now, you know, it, it, it is a great opportunity to get to come out and meet you, shake your hands, and hug you. And everybody's learning now. I'm not much of a handshaker. I'm a hugger. Um, you will... You will see some photos of Saturday night. Miss Rita is a hugger, isn't she? Yeah. She is Aww. a hugger. She's a big hugger. When she gives you a hug, you know it comes straight from her heart, just like the singing. Now, this is the singing Saturday night 
at Fullerville Baptist Church, um, an amazing group. Now, let's talk a little bit about the Dove Brothers. I know one of the guys just lost his son in an accident. Matt, do you remember which one of them? One of them's son was killed in a the motorcycle player. accident? Yeah. Okay, the what happened? Player. Uh, somebody pulled right out in front of him. Yeah, wow. and uh, 21 years old. Wow. And uh, he, he passed away pretty much instantly. So, uh, wow. but uh, the, the piano player now seems to be doing Jan, very well. that's little Jan, and she is coming to be on the show. Let me tell you something. She wrote some amazing songs when she was with Wendy Bagwell and the Sunlighters mm -hmm. and was married to Wendy's son. He died, and now she is married to Jerry Goff. Yep, both of them doing a great work doing together. Doing great ministry, great that's ministry. That's right. Yeah, we had a great time on Saturday night. And, you know, mentioning that, I think um, one of the things that took place in my life was that it just became a job. Mm -hmm. You know, you just go out there and just do your job. Where now, it, it, you know, we just look forward to it. We have a great time, and uh, the people are, are great. And just uh, just relieved just to keep it going I love on. the way you smile at each other on stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The give and There's take There's me and there. you, see? Look at that. There we are. Well, that's not trouble <laughs> standing there. <laughs> That's double trouble. That's double now, trouble. What is that? Well, that it's a funny shot, but we were having dinner beforehand, and that uh, that's the lady checking people in. But there was just you talk about a feeling in a building, mm -hmm. and of course Bill's line, if we ain't you know meeting, we ain't eating, or right. vice versa. Well, I'm telling you, there was some phenomenal food there that yeah. that evening. That's you know, why I took a picture of that. You know, the kids at that church, the kids at that church, the whole youth group raises money by doing. The concession stand when there's a singing, don't they? Yeah, I was going to mention that. They they work hard because they get there early, stay to the end, and of course Saturday night they tear down and get it ready for Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. I have yet to hear any of them complain. They, mm -hmm. have, they have a good time. If you watch them back there in that concession mm -hmm. stand, they're having fun back there with each other, but also just enjoying, and, and that's one thing I think the diplomats have uh, been able to be a blessing to them, is they host these singings at Fullerville. It, it helps so many people because mm -hmm. it helps these young people go on their mission trips and do things for their youth group and and they just they're just there having a good time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we we helped the economy because we bought that coconut pound cake, which was absolutely mm. delicious. And, <laughs> Here we and go. Fran was so funny; she tasted mine and she said, "I'll be right back." <laughs> <laughs> I've done that there too. But it but there are just the feelings there. But the feeling came from y'all. Yeah, we had a great time. And great listening spirit. to the people, as I walked around the floor, I was taking some photographs. I don't sit next to her the whole time. And I'm listening to people talking about, boy, look at him. It's so good to see him smile again. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, I'm happy. But you make me feel good whenever you sing. And I keep humming up mm -hmm. and down the road. It's mm -hmm. either put a CD in or I'm going to sing myself silly. We won't tell anybody that it is now June, and she is still listening to you in Oh Holy Night. Oh, you listen, know? Christmas. <laughs> that, that Christmas no. CD is still in our car. <laughs> but Christmas in your heart all the time. Sure. But there's still a difference in your voice now. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I even said something to Sherry the other day. I said, there's, Matt's voice is better. Uh -huh. There, you've relaxed, relaxed or something. Yeah, it's relaxed. just, yeah. But it is so noticeable, but it is so much fun to sit there. I could have sat there till 2 a.m., Absolutely, it just, you could it just keep amazing. singing. Well, we and when you sing Resurrection in. Ground, it's just like. And we told yesterday whoa. about the little woman in the box getting us off on Bankhead Highway, and thank the good Lord. Honestly, when I picked up the phone and called you, and you were right behind us on the interstate, yep. Yep. he's coming out of South Carolina, we're coming out of Jasper, and we end up on the same interstate at the same location, and I'm thinking, okay, God, thank you so Those much. Those are people that are on a wavelength. <laughs> yeah, See, that there's right. a connect, you talk about that that invisible line, those, we were it on a funny. wavelength. But where that little woman in that box took us, I mean, we went to Villa Rica by way of We went through Austin, Nashville, we went I'm telling through, you. It was crazy, guys. So if that little woman in the box <laughs> sends you astray, you just turn her off She's and use your to. own judgment. She's yeah, We laughed, we were silly, we giggled, though, we and we were together, we so we knew that it, it didn't matter. We were, yeah. God was yeah. going to take care of us wherever we wound yeah. up, but we knew we'd get there. We'd you got another time. birthday? Another birthday. Kenny Green from his sister, Shirley, says happy birthday, and that's today. So happy birthday to Kenny Green. So. Happy birthday. Right. Happy birthday. Now, this week is going to be full of 
things to talk about that they better remember because next week we will probably have at least 40 trivia questions. Oh, I thought I'd have more than that. I'm going to be ready for a crowd of people. Okay. And I want to thank everyone right now who's now offering to give us door prizes, say, door prizes or trivia gifts. And Rich Scott will be with us that day because trading time is about to come on the air. July 6th, we are changing to one hour. We will come on just like always, 8.30 to 10 a.m., and then Rich will come on from 10 to 11, and then the news will be broadcast live at night. So we're going to have a totally new format, but we're going to take Rich on the road with us. Now, we we love him. He's a Yankee, son. He's a dad burn Yankee, but we love him. Oh. He helps with the meal every Monday, Dad. Man, is he going to be in for a surprise. Well, I he used is to be, be a Yankee, so... I mean, yes, you used right. to be, but you're now you're Southern... You Southernized. Yeah, you I do declare once that Southernism <laughs> sets into you, it's you there. just That's learn right. and it never goes away. That's right. Now, can we get the girls and Paulette up on a Monday night? Oh, yeah. Okay, let, let's yeah. try to commit to that. and and get y'all up here once you come up here. I actually spent the night in Mineral Bluff last night. It took me, what did I say, 16 minutes to get here? It was yeah. perfect, it was perfect. It's, so, people talk about going to McKaysville Mineral Bluff like it's, on the like it's of going the to Mars. No. I'll think, pe people will come in the store and I'll say, and I'll you know, I ask them where home is and they'll go, well, Jasper or Canton, and I'll say, thank you for having your passport validated to come see us. <laughs> yeah. And they'll go, well, I really was surprised it wasn't that far yeah, up here. 45 minutes. Our people will hear in McKaysville that I live in LJ, and they go, what? That's a long drive. And it's I go, not. it's 15, 20 minutes based yeah. on traffic. Yeah. Or whether or not I have to stop somewhere and get a, a coffee or a, yeah. you know, or apple pie. So, and that's the cool thing. From Turtle Town to Ball Ground, we are within an hour and 10 minutes of each other. So on this meet and greet, we will also do some meet and greet in Ball Ground. I'm looking at the Inspirations Restaurant down there. Oh. Nice, nice people, and they are at Hawkins Crossing. Nice, nice little development. So we're thinking about doing something down oh, there. That would we'll, be fun. we'll call and warn them. It's a very small place, very small place. So we may have to do it after their lunch rush. But I'm thinking we really need to that go to Ball fun. Ground too. So we are going to go from Ball Ground to Turtle Town. We don't know where we'll end up in Turtle Town. We're going to go to Duck Town. We've already chosen a place in Duck Town. So we are going to be meeting and greeting in every single area we serve. And I, I would take you to Kimsey College, but I just can't <laughs> seem to get there. You've been there, I have been you? there. I have been there. It'd be a nice place for a concert Wouldn't later it, on though? if it was fixed up yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. so. Well, something we encourage each and every one of you to do on July the 4th, the Epworth that community makes the most amazing pancakes on the 4th of July. Did you go last year? No, because I was in the store okay. doing some things. But start on the 3rd with the fireworks, fireworks in display in McKaysville right. that night. And then on the 4th, we do a pancake. Cabin. Rent a, rent a cabin, pancake breakfast, and uh -huh. then I'll be driving you and Rich in the 4th of July Blue Ridge That's Parade. Right. That's right. Well, right now, it is time to go to Rich Scott and Trading Time. And I'm going to tell you something. I wouldn't trade him for a 76 Cadillac Coupe DeVille. Gee, thanks. Some great new bargains to tell you about on the Tuesday edition of ETC3's Trading Time. We have a 32-foot travel trailer new to our list at a great price. Or maybe you'd like a four-wheeler for just $800. Also for grabs, a set of bar stools, a trundle bed, a beautiful antique china cabinet, some little boys' bicycles, a two-carat sapphire ring, and an oil reproduction of one of Michelangelo's most famous works of art. You never know what you're going to find on etc 3s Trading Time. I'm Rich Scott. Join me for the live show each weekday morning at 11 or the Encore presentations each weekday afternoon at 5.30 p.m. and again at 12 midnight. We invite you to call in during the live show, list your items for sale on Trading Time, or you can shop online anytime at our website, www.northgeorgianow.com slash trading time. It's a whole new way to find what you're looking for in the North Georgia Mountains and the Copper Basin. We'll be looking for you later today right here on ETC3. Now back to Sherry Martin at North Georgia Now Today. Well, we have another birthday, Sunshine. Whose birthday? Uh, well, I believe it says Irene, but it's, it's uh -huh. got I-R-E-N, so I'm not I'm pronouncing that right, but I'm right. trying. So, uh, Waycaster, I believe. Uh -huh. So, uh, birthday's tomorrow, so happy birthday to Irene Waycaster. I hope we've said that right. If we right. didn't, we apologize, and if not, she'll give you a... Give something. me a call. Tell yeah. me we messed it up. <laughs> tell, us, tell us we messed it up. She'll give you a calendar or something. That'll work out real good. <laughs> and I, let me tell you about another birthday that's going to happen. Lori Tipton, uh, who we refer to her as my baby girl. She and I hit it off immediately the moment we met. We didn't separate. It was like we were joined at birth until I took her to Alaska. 
two years ago today. And she's I made, doing good. She is doing amazing. She works for the MDC affiliate there. Her birthday is two days from today. Yeah. It's on the 11th. My daughter Dawn's birthday is the same day. They are Gemini. They show the Gemini. Trust me. They are um, very different and very alike at times. But Lori is living her dream. She is living her dream in Alaska. And when she called me last night, she said, do you realize what tonight is? It is the anniversary of you taking me to Alaska. I cried because I lost one of my dearest friends, but I still get to talk to her. She is still my baby girl. And um, she will be 26. When I met her, she was a baby child. She was just a little child. But she started here at ETC with aspirations to do well. She did very, very well. And then one day, she said, I've always wanted to go to Alaska. Now, her mom and dad went to Alaska last two weeks ago and got to spend some time with her. They were absolutely amazed. Oh, yeah, yeah. The daddy said, I understand now what you see here. I understand it. If you get a chance, if you don't get to travel to Alaska, Discovery Channel has some amazing programs about Alaska. Go through our local programming and find something and just watch something about Alaska because it will it just makes you feel good. It makes I you feel good. I still hope we get it to does. go up there it and do some shows heart. from up there. That's well, what I hope. Even we would we, love to. Even if we took Fred and just, you know, recorded them. And oh, right. I'm carrying yeah. the luggage. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's the most beautiful place I've oh, ever it been. Is. It, it is. She it's sent some of the prettiest pictures the other day, and she was so cute when she got to, to cover the Iditarod. Oh, yeah. Trail race. She sent great photos Well, she's Well, she spent an hour with Governor Palin this week, and her dad got to meet Governor Sarah Palin. That was like her dad's lifelong dream. So last night, she was so pumped up about that. She said, my daddy didn't care about that. I did a ride. He didn't care about anything about Alaska, but he got to meet the governor. So, you know, she is living her dream. Each and every one of us have dreams. We have goals. My dream today is to finish this job for the next 10 years or so. I would love to be here doing what I do because I love what I do. And I think that, I hope it comes across. I hope you understand how much coming into your homes means to me. Mm -hmm. Being now you're doing you. a job that that matters to you. It is very very important, isn't it? Yeah. Well, being out with you or and, and watching the people that come up to you and talk about how you've changed their lives. So. Or well, the people that, that so. went to be checked for skin cancer alone. Look how many people we, we'd be out somewhere, mm -hmm. and eight or ten people at a time would come up and say, "You made me go to a doctor," or right. "I listened to you and I went to the doctor." It, it's amazing. I told her one day, I've traveled with celebrities, and I know what it's like. And traveling with her is like traveling with a celebrity. Well, because she needs Freddie now. She needs, <laughs> someone to keep, she needs someone to take that blackberry away from her and <laughs> he turn calls it off. It the blueberry. <laughs> he calls well, I call it the crack berry. And you call he it said, Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> he said, Sunday, that phone kept ringing, ringing. He said, I've burned that phone in the creek. <laughs> he said, that blueberry is going in the creek. <laughs> but people that relate to you, I have to admire, well, I do, I admire you. You are such a phenomenal person. But to listen to people who say, you know, I'd get up in the morning and I didn't have a reason to get dressed or I just couldn't get together. Now I get up and I can't wait to get the TV turned on to see what you're going to do. Are, are they, and how crazy and then, and then they want to go somewhere <laughs> or they want to be where, where you are. Are they people that we meet now at the singings who said, I would never have come to one of these if you hadn't talked about it. You know what the thing I've loved the most? I will get emails from people and I will immediately respond. And they'll say, I can't believe you answered my email. Is that you? And I said, yeah. that's me. That's me. Because I am and always will be me. Yeah, I'm just me. me. That's the coolest if I, thing. If I answered my email or somebody else did, I said, yeah. no, I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah my that, that's personal. Yeah, I think that's the thing we love the most about what we do. We want to maintain that personal connection. Sure. We want to maintain that personal connection. Now, right now, it's almost time to leave you, but we need to go to the weather right quick. Today's weather is brought to you by Appalachian Community Bank and Gilmer County Bank, a great bank to come home to. And I have to tell you, we didn't have any obits today. If we had have had obits, they would have been brought to you by Logan Funeral Home and Chapel. Oh, we do finally have one obit. Do we have time for that? Let's get to the obit and to the weather. I saw old coming back and at my father's door. I heard him say, come on, father, ain't you ready to go? He said, yes. God knows he see. Yes, yes. God knows well. I got on my traveling shoes. Lord, I'm done my duty. Got on my traveling shoes. Oh, my traveling shoes. Oh, my traveling shoes. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I saw old Dad coming back and at that old 
Cinnamon's old I heard him say, come on, Cinnamon, ain't you ready to go? Oh, well, we waited and we thought about it. How we could be and then we bought a start of laughing around. Around in me, well, I heard him say to Lord Brown, I don't want to die. And then we bought a start of laughing around. Around in fire, well, I heard him say to Lord, won't you just let me live? And then we bought a start of laughing around. Welcome back. We are, you know what? Time flies when we're having fun. Today was a great day. We talked about the diplomats. We featured the diplomats. Next Tuesday, they will be live in the house. Remember the Barker Brothers on the 19th, and I'm going to purchase some tickets that I will be giving away. I may use a couple of them Tuesday to give away as Let trivia. Get, That'll be good. So show up. We'll use them for trivia. Instead of them on the air, let's do that. I'll make a special ticket yeah. that we can give. Next Tuesday, next Tuesday, we want you to come out and be with us. It is almost time to say goodbye. We never say goodbye. We say see you later, only on ETC. From North Georgia now today, I'm Sherry Martin. I'm Matt Diver. We don't like goodbye, so we'll see you tomorrow right here on Today. That's North right. Georgia only now. on Today, ETC 3, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 10 a.m., 6 to 7.30 p.m. and 12.30 to That's 2. Right. Hey there, Mike Costanza. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs>